Okay, we're going to do a really, really easy to tie pike bite. Um, yeah, just going to be a basic bait fish pattern. Uh, very, very easy to tie if you're just getting started in trying large predator flies. This is kind of going to be really easy for you to do. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm using two colours. I'm going to use an olive and I'm going to use a, a white. Uh, the eyes are going to be a 12 millimeter. The hook is a 70, and the thread is going to be some of my dino thread. Okay, all the products you see, a bit of self promotion, are on my website. If you check underneath, you'll see the link. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started. First thing is we tie right in just before the hook bend. Few wraps and then what we'll do is put a little bit of varnish just on there just to hold stuff together and make it tooth proof of course so we're then we're going to take some of our, our white material if you see here it's not a huge amount okay if you get some bends in it like this the easy thing to do is just pull it like this now this has two good things about it when you pull it is that when you're pulling it you're actually straightening it so if you get some fibers especially synthetics that have a crinkle in them um, if you give them a pull like this it will straighten them um, the second one is that it also gives you uh, the taper that you want. Because obviously it's all about getting a good uh, profile, and getting a good um, bait fish taper. You want something that looks natural in the water. Okay, so I'm going to start tying that in. Uh, as you know, I've tapered it. And it's going to go right to the back end of the vise here. And I just push down slightly so the material goes right around the hook. And then you put a couple of ties in like that. And that's your first one. You probably can't see that, but the varnish actually soaks through that. And that will actually make that rock solid. With your forward facing piece, what to do is just separate it on the hook. And split it actually on the hook itself. So you get equal amounts on each side of the hook couple of ties just like that okay so what we're going to do is bring the thread forward and we're going to go to about there okay and you can see that's just about a quarter of the well, just over a quarter of the way back from the hook eye um, we're going to get a, a white thread again so we're going to get a white fiber Again, you don't need to use huge amounts. It's a big mistake a lot of people make when they when they get into maker with synthetics. They actually use too much material. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this through. Again, straightening the fibers and giving me a nice taper at the same time. on there and that is just shorter probably by about what ooh, uh, maybe about an inch or so shorter than the tail end and push it down so it encompasses all of the hook shank a couple of ties down like that a little bit of varnish actually just a bit too much there but doesn't matter again same thing split it Fold it back, like so, hold, and a few wraps, like so. And we're going to do exactly the same again. Don't worry if you've got wee sticky outfits there. I mean, when the fly is wet, that'll all stick together, or 
you can actually just chop them off if you want, it makes no difference. Okay, so let's get this straightened and tapered. This is actually quite straight, this fibre. Um, quite like it. But I do get a wee bit of a kink in it now and again. Okay, so this time again we're going to be just slightly shorter. And tie that just in front of the last piece. Now with this piece, what we're going to do again is split it and fold it under. And then split on each side of the hook. A couple of wraps there. Can you see that shape starting to appear? That nice teardrop type shape that gives you a good profile in the water. Another piece. Let's taper it off. And same again. That varnish that pot is actually soaking up through that, so we don't need to put any more on just now. Again, it, with the varnish, um, Sally Henson hard as nails, great stuff. I get some funny looks when I go uh, and buy some from my local supermarket. You know, you're standing in the makeup aisle having a look at varnishes. <laughs> it's quite hilarious. Okay, so there we go. You see that's starting to develop really nicely. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some flash to this. So I've got some raspberry red raspberry you see pull it a wee bit and that's going to go right behind where you last whipped on like so it's looking good And we fold it back the same as we did with the fiber. Pinch it in, hold the material, and a few wraps around. Okay. That's looking quite good. That's how I wanted it. Okay. So we're going to go for a some more white here. Again, pulling it to straighten it, just get those little kinks out. Again, it doesn't really matter because it'll all stick to the side of the bait fish in the water. It doesn't affect it at all. Just aesthetically pleasing while you're actually tying. And you can see by doing that, that's tapered that as well. Any really long straggly bits you can deal with when the, when the fly is actually finished. So we're going to get most of this. It's going to go right along the back now. So. You have your shorter bits here and your last piece here of the white is actually very long so it's going to sit over the top of that what that does it kind of gives a a wide profile body so where your short hair is there your long hair sits over the top of it and that's another way of getting that classic teardrop in there right okay so we just get that on and then short bit again that helps with the profile being short and it saves a lot of work with scissors so we just pull it over we're splitting that on the hook and split it again so you've got about even so don't worry if you don't get it even first time because you can sort that out after you've tied the flight not a problem okay just lay down a A little base of thread there you could actually just stick an eye on that and that would be pretty hot quite a nice fly okay so 
So you're nearly done. Um, as you can see, that's mostly white uh, because you don't need to tie all the back colours in just now unless you're having a really big, thick back colour. Uh, I, I like I like mostly belly colour and then the fibre on top for the back. So. Again, taper in that, pulling it out, pulling it straight. Okay, so that is going to sit, you see, the whole length. So as you've tapered that, it's obviously pulled some lengths longer than others. And it will sit right at the back. You can, at the end, and I'll show you, just trim those little bits off if you really want to. Okay, so we're going to tie that on, like so. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little, little bit of varnish in there, just like so. Again, just gives it some strength, uh, makes it a little more toothproof. And I have to say, you can use super glue if you want, that's fine. But all the flies that I've tied for myself, for customers, not one has come apart, um, you know, unlike this crap you buy from Africa, um, <laughs> won't last three or four fish probably, just the way they tie them. Um, but this, I've, I've never had these flies come apart in all my tying life, and that's spot on. So, there we go. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to take half of that material, like so, and we're going to fold that back, like so. And you can see you've got that little lump there, so we'll tie down on the top of that, a few wraps around, like so. And then we come forward, a couple of wraps, and then push that back. So, you see there's a wee lump there, don't worry about that. So what we're going to do now, it's my favourite trick, we're going to get the lighter and we're going to heat that. And I'm just going to heat that little lump, push it down. Now what you're doing here is you're actually melting that fibre so that will be absolutely solid and absolutely bomb proof <coughs> and that's your your basic your basic fly uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the eyes um, I always use Z epoxy um, I just find it's the best epoxy out there if you have like dime stores pound pound lands etc you can actually buy little syringes of epoxy um, they they are really good as well, um, but obviously you don't get as much. Um, I use the, the five minute if I'm doing one off flies like this. Um, if I'm doing a whole heap of flies, I'll make the flies up first before I put the eyes on. Uh, and then I'll use the 30 minute epoxy. Uh, that gives me some working time if I'm doing like dozens of flies at a time. Okay, so equal amounts of epoxy on there. I use an old dubbin needle um, and I just mix it in like so. Just in circles, just mix it all in. Again, bearing in mind that this stuff is uh, five minutes so it does cure pretty quick. So just be aware. So you know roughly where your eye is going to go. And in there to watch for stray hairs as well because they can stick okay so let's just push that epoxy in your dubbing needle like so and then what to do is take another little piece like this and then just if you push that through like so that will bond all those fibers actually inside um, 
so your eyes don't flare out. It's also quite good because it adds a little bit of weight as well, which will help with um, the swimming action of your fly. And then I'll take a, a tiny amount and I'll just put it over the nose like so. Again, you can actually do very, very small noses. Um, it's all dependent on how much material you put on the end there. Obviously, if you only use a few strands of your material, then you're going to get a very small nose. But I do like to have some kind of nose in front of the fish. I mean, when did you last see a bait fish that just had an eye at the front of it? Even though it look alright. Um, right, so we're going to get our eyes. Again, 12 millimeter. These are plain red ones. That's going to go like so. And that is pretty much, is pretty much it. Um, that's a really, really quick and easy bait fish to make. Can you see that? Again, because I'm using five minute epoxy, that'll cure obviously in five minutes. If you want to, um, you see these little bits here, you can trim them off if you really want to. But as I said, it makes no difference because when the fly is wet, those will actually stick to the body. Um, and again, you've got the end here if you want to take those off. Loose fibers, just take them off like so. And you keep checking on your eye. Always worth just checking on the position of the eye as well. You can see that looks pretty good. And then just keep gently pushing it in. Nice and streamlined to the body. And there you have it. Um, a really easy bait fish. Of course, you can use whatever colours you want. Um, you can put stripes on that. Sharpie markers are great for that. You can put stripes on it. You can change the color of your flash. Um, you can use yellows, depending on what colors you're tying. You've got peacock there. The choice is really endless. Um, you know, but so, sometimes it's really worth having a look at what's the bait fish in your local water. Um, get it up on Google. Google is your friend on this one. Um, find out what's living in your local water. Uh, and then just like, tie to match it um, and you won't go far wrong um, and that's about it but that's that's a fly that will, you'll be able to cast all day it's lightweight that fly you'd actually be able to cast in a nine weight all day without feeling like it's casting a wet sock uh, great flies really easy to make if you're new to fly tying try it um, and have fun thanks for watching